Um, this is just basic information about lead in drinking water. So this is from the EPA and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, agree that no known safe level of lead in a child's blood. Um, lead is harmful to health, especially for children. So here are all these links that you can look at. Um, so here's some general information about lead in drinking water. Um, lead, how lead gets into drinking water. Lead can enter drinking water when plumbing materials that contain lead corrode, especially where the water has high acidity or low mineral content that corrodes pipes and fixtures. The most common sources of lead in drinking water are lead pipes, faucets, and fixtures. In homes with lead pipes that connect the home to the water main, also known as lead service lines, these pipes are typically the most significant source of lead in the water. Lead pipes are more likely to be found in older cities and homes built before 1986. Among homes without lead service lines, the most common problem is with brass or chrome plated brass faucets and plumbing with lead solder. That means the stuff that like holds the pipes together. Okay. The Safe Drinking Water Act has reduced the maximum allowable lead content. That is the content that is considered lead free to be a weight, weighted average of two 0.5% calculated across the wetted surface of pipes, pipe fittings, plumbing fittings, and fixtures, and 0.2% for solder and flux. Um, I don't know what flux is, but solder is the stuff that holds the pipes together. All right, corrosion is a dissolving or wearing away of metal caused by a chemical reaction between water and your plumbing. A number of factors are involved in the extent to which lead enters the water, including the chemistry of the water, acidity and alkalinity, and the types and amounts oops, of minerals in the water, the amount of lead it comes into contact with, the temperature of the water, the amount of wear in the pipes, how long the water stays in the pipes, and the presence of protective scales or coatings inside the plumbing materials. To address corrosion of lead in, and copper into drinking water, EPA issued the lead and copper rule under the authority of the SDWA. One requirement of the LCR is corrosion control treatment to prevent lead and copper from contaminating drinking water. Corrosion control treatment means utilities must make drinking water less corrosive to the materials it comes into contact with on its way to consumers' taps. Okay, so health effects of exposure to lead on dr in drinking water. Is there a safe level of lead in drinking water? The Safe Drinking Water Act requires EPA to determine the level of contaminants in drinking water at which no adverse health effects are likely to occur with an adequate margin of safety. These non-enforceable health goals based solely on possible health risks are called maximum contaminant level goals. EPA has set the maximum contaminant level goal for lead in drinking water at zero because lead is a toxic metal that can be harmful to human health even at low exposure levels. Lead is persistent and it can bioaccumulate in the body over time. Young children, infants, and fetuses are particularly vulnerable to lead because the physical and behavioral effects of lead occur at lower exposure levels in children. Um, than in adults. A dose of lead that would have little effect on an adult can have a significant effect on the child. In children, low levels of exposure have been linked to damage to the central and peripheral nervous systems. Learning disability, shorter stature, impaired hearing, and impaired formation and function of blood cells. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that Pub the public health actions be initiated when the level of lead is, at children's blood is five micrograms per deciliter or more. It is important to recognize all the ways a child can be exposed to lead. Children are exposed to lead in paint, dust, soil, air, and food, as well as drinking water. If the level of lead in a child's blood is at or above the CDC action level of my five micrograms per deciliter, it may be due to lead exposures from a combination of sources. EPA estimates that drinking water can make up 20% or more of a person's total exposure to lead. Infants who consume mostly mixed formula can receive 40% to 60% of their exposure to lead from drinking water. Even low levels of lead in the blood of children can result in behavior and learning problems, lower IQ and hyperactivity, slowed growth, hearing problems, anemia. In rare cases, ingestion of lead can cause seizures, coma, and even death. 
in pregnant women, lead can accumulate in our bodies over time where it's stored in bones along with calcium. During pregnancy, lead is released from bones as maternal calcium and is used to help form the bones of the fetus. This is particularly true if a woman does not have enough dietary calcium. Lead can also cross the placental barrier exposing the fetus to lead. This can result in serious effects to the mother and her developing fetus, including reduced um, growth to the fetus, premature birth. Okay. Um, in adults, lead is also harmful. Adults can ex exposed to lead can suffer from cardiovascular effects, increased blood pressure and incidence of hypertension, decreased kidney function, reproductive problems in both men and women. Can I shower in lead contaminated water? Yes, bathing and showering should be safe for you and your children. Even if the water contains lead over EPA's action level, human skin does not absorb lead in water. This information applies to most situations and to a large majority of the population, but individual circumstances may vary. Some situations, such as cases involving highly corrosive water, may require additional recommendations or more stringent actions. Your local water authority is always your first source for testing and identifying lead contamination in your tap water. Many public water authorities have websites that include data on drinking water, including results of lead testing. Links to such data can be found here at this website. Okay, so what can you do? Um, EPA requires all community water systems to prepare and deliver an annual water quality report called a consumer confidence report for their customers by July 1st of each year. Contact your water utility if you'd like to receive a copy of their latest report. If your water comes from a household well or their private water supply, check with your health department or with any nearby water utilities that use groundwater for information on contaminants of concern in your area. Second, you can have your water tested for lead. Homes may have internal plumbing materials containing lead since you cannot see, taste, or smell lead dissolved in water. Testing is the only sure way of telling whether there are harmful quantities of lead in your drinking water. A list of laboratories are available from your state or local drinking water authority, da, 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 da. So things that you can do to reduce lead, here you can look at those. But you can get your child tested, find out if there's drinking water. But anyways, that was just a little bit of information about that, okay? And then the other, um, I know you can't see this, but I'm looking at it for me. Um, the other two video or the other two um, sites for you to look at are um, um, uh, one's a video and one's a bunch of pictures. So you should be able to do the assignment. Um, it's just these two were readings. Okay. All right. I hope this helps you. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.